Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mid-Morning Manna. Thank you for tuning in today. Again, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already done this, to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. That way, every day when we go live on the air, or when we go on the air, most of the time recorded, but when we go on the air every day at that 10 o'clock time, you'll get a notification. You, you don't have to watch it every day, but every day that you do watch it, you can watch it on time when everybody else is watching. And I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Uh, just uh, let folks know that you like what you're seeing. And then share. Hit the share arrow there. And just get this message out. Uh, we need to see people get their hearts stirred. But their hearts are not going to be stirred apart from the Word of God and the Holy Spirit working, using the Word of God, applying it in their life, dealing with them, that we're not going to get much done. Well, this week we've been talking about th these famous men. I, I have five of them. Uh, we may do it again another week because there's five or 10 or 15 more that I'd like to tell you about that I had the privilege to have an interaction with, to work with, to serve with, to go soul winning with, to sit under their preaching. And in, uh, in a number of cases, they invited me to, to come to their church or their college and, uh, and sit under my preaching. And I thought, wow, this is crazy. I wish they wasn't in the audience because I'm intimidated by them. But God is good, and he opens doors, and he makes a way, and Lord, he, he answers prayer, and God wants to use you. But you need to have a signature verse, a verse that's a motivating factor in your life, a verse that God uses to help you to make wise decisions, uh, a verse where you just surrender yourself to him, and this verse becomes a watchword in your life. And we call it signature verse. You know, when somebody signs your Bible, they put that verse reference there underneath that they don't write the whole verse out. They just put the reference there. And like in my case, John 15, 8, and somebody else might put John 3, 16 or whatever else it is. You can go back and listen. You'll know what these five men uh, do and what they put on, on their verses. And in my Bible, I've got the signatures of every one of them and, uh, and scores more, I think, uh, 20 more at least or 30 more. But I, I want God to use you I, I, you know, I realize this mid-morning manna, we, you think, well, preacher, do you do that so to be well-known? Well, I wouldn't mind being well-known, but that's not the motivation. The motivation is to touch people's lives, to help people, and maybe to stir them. Maybe I can just touch something in, in, the, in their heart and in their, in their life that would cause them to say, you know what? I need to be doing more for Christ. I need to be serving more. These great men that we're hearing about this week, they literally, every one of them, had thousands upon thousands of people saved every year. Every year. Uh, the very first one we did was Hyman Appleman. You know, if you didn't get that one, you ought to go back and watch it. Hyman and Appleman had an average of 7,000 professions of faith per year. Can you imagine that? That is amazing. I thought it was great because I checked out, went back, found out that we had in, in baptisms to see how many people had trusted Christ. And we averaged 400 a year. I'd set a goal as a young preacher that I wanted to have a uh, 365, because the Bible says the Lord added to the church daily, such as were saved. And, and and so I thought, well, three, a day less, 365 a year, I set a goal, 365. And by the time we left there, 37 years later, added it all up, divided it by 37, we averaged over uh, 400 per year. Isn't that amazing? And then there were thousands of others who made professions of faith in the highways and the hedges and the byways and on in revival campaigns and other things that never came to Shawnee Baptist Church. Uh, they they were saved out there somewhere and, and, and found a church in that area, or maybe they didn't get in church. I don't know. But I'm hoping that they did, prayed that they did, encouraged them to, and to go on forward with God and for God. Well, today, again, we're talking about Dr. Jack Hiles, pastor of the First Baptist Church in Hammond, Indiana, one of the greatest churches in America. There's a lot of naysayers about Brother Hiles and about, you know, it's like it's like Donald Trump or any person in high profile. Even you know, It doesn't matter if it's Donald Trump or Joe Biden. There's thousands of people that hate both of them. Or, I don't mean the same thousands of people. Thousands of people that hate Donald Trump, thousands of people that hate Joe Biden. And anybody that does much in this life, for some reason, people like to try to knit Pick them to pieces. Tear them apart. Well, there's this man, Dr. Jack Hiles. I suppose, in my thinking, and I could be wrong here, but in America, 
And in my lifetime, probably the man that saw more people in his ministry come to Christ than anyone else. Thousands upon thousands of people saved. And the devil will just put all kinds, nitpick him to death. Uh, about the stand because he had dress standards. He thought he thought ladies ought to look like ladies and men ought to look like men. By the way, I agree with him. But uh, that that was his that was his dress standard, and, uh, and he had uh, that. He he thought that people ought to be faithful to church, three to three to thrive, be there on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, have some responsibility, giving tithes and offerings, counting for Jesus Christ. But the biggest thing, most of all. Winning somebody to Christ, running on, working on that bus route, teaching a Sunday school class, going for, and built that church that ran tens of thousands, had big days where they had over 3,000 on, on many occasions, they had Pentecost Sundays, uh, where, you know, 3,000 baptized on the day of Pentecost, they had Pentecost Sundays, attempting to baptize 3,000 on one Sunday, and that kind of thing, came close to it often, and uh, what a, what a, what an amazing thing. Well, you said, what was his life verse? What was his signature verse? Well, I'm going to give it to you. Just don't, don't get excited here. Daniel chapter 12, verse number three. The Bible says this, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and forever. You see, Dr. Howells, a great man. By the way, he told me, he, I, I was just amazed because I picked him up and we were headed to church and he was going to preach and I picked him up from the motel and we were headed for church. He said, uh, you know, he said, the doctors told me I had to quit preaching or I had less than two years to live. He said, but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on serving God because I might not have two years to live anyway. So I want to use every year, every day, for the Lord Jesus Christ, trying to motivate people to be soul winners, trying to get so people saved myself. And you say, well, what was his life verse? Again, here it is, Daniel chapter 12, verse number three. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and forever. God said we ought to have a goal of reaching many, not just reaching any, some people don't reach any, but reaching many. And everybody can reach somebody. I know you can because God told us to do it and God wouldn't have told us to do it if it couldn't be done. What You think God's some kind of a, uh, some, some kind of torture person wants to tell everybody that they need to be doing something that they, that's impossible for them to do? No way. God loves you. He wants to use you. You're his child and he's left you here on planet earth to represent him if you're saved. Now, if you're not saved, I want to tell you, I'd love to share with you how you can be saved. I'd be glad to send you some information. All you have to do is to go over there to, if you're on YouTube or if you're, if, if you're on Facebook, leave a comment and, uh, and just let me know that you'd like to get information. How can I know for sure I'm going to heaven? And I believe God would uh, bless you with that. I believe he would I, I would, I would send you the information and I believe God would bless you within it. So just let him have his way in your life. Will you do that for Jesus' sake? And meanwhile, give your testimony. If you're saved, give your testimony. Uh, hand out some gospel tracts. When you go to church, pick up some tracts from the from the track rack there. And, and then through the week, try to get rid of all of them and get start over again the next week with a new stack of tracts. Let God use you. Be used of God in a great way. He wants to. And again, Dr. Jack Howes, his life verse, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and forever. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, to be busy. Help us to be serving. Lord, we have to be servants to be serving. Help us to, help us to surrender to you. Lord, have your way in our lives. Use us for your glory. Help us to turn many to righteousness. I don't know how many, but Lord, I, I hope I can turn many more to righteousness before you call me home. And I pray you'd use all of our listening audience today and all those who are watching, Lord, just to motivate them on the inside and help them to find a life verse or a, or a signature verse that they can use to let others know that they stand for Jesus Christ, that they love the Lord, and they want other people to love him too. God, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.